I was actually born into it. Uh, my name Corky comes from the calling of an F4U Corsair that my dad was assigned to uh, at the end of the Second World War, and on the side of it was written Corky, and he didn't know what it was, but he liked it, so he called me Corky. Thirty years later, when I was doing a commercial for Toshiba, they paid me to use the, my name besides flying the stunts for the commercial. And it turns out that there is a level in the samurai culture called Corky. And when you reach the level of Corky, you're a favored son of the gods and not to be compromised. And that's where the name comes from. I was actually in my mother's belly and uh, flying in a PT-19. I don't remember that. But I grew up in it. We always had airplanes around and uh, World War II fighters and trainers. And that's how I got into it. I would travel. Uh, a lot of times riding in the back of Bob Hoover's Mustang and cleaning his airplane in my father's Bearcat. So I was around it during the summer when I wasn't in school, cleaning airplanes. We were close friends with uh, Paul Mance and Frank Talman, who were doing this uh, the movie stuff in Hollywood. And uh, about 1967, we were in Long Island, and they needed a camera plane. And so we used my P-51 Mustang and then they had me do some stunts for them with the Mustang and it kind of grew from there. Uh, once you do a major uh, film and they like your work, it kinda, word travels from director to producer and all of a sudden I started getting calls and so I was still flying air shows on the weekends and making movies during the week. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. Every movie is like its own child, so everyone is different. There are tremendous stories on all of them. Uh, you know, from the Bond movies, I've done four James Bond movies, and uh, I'm kind of known in the industry for creating the stunts. A director will work with me when the script first is developed and say, this is an idea we have, we need an aviation stunt here, what would you do? How would you, you know, how would you put this stunt together? So I will go ahead and create a scene for it and then fly it. Some of them you, uh, you think you should have waited before you spoke, like flying through the hangar. They said, gee, what can we do? You know, Bond's got a missile chasing him in this little jet. And I said, well, simple. We'll go fly through a hangar, and then the missile will lock onto one of the airplanes in the hangar. And, and when it was all over, I walked out of the meeting and said, damn, I'm going to go fly through a hangar. So it was, you know, you got to watch up what you say. That's as much fun as actually flying them because you're working directly with the director and the writers. For example, in the Bond movie License to Kill, we had a situation where they were actually stumped. Bond was underwater, he was about to be captured, and they had all of these pontoon boats on top of the water. And they said, how are we going to get Bond out of here? Well, I had a seaplane in that scene already. He was the one that flew in and brought the cocaine in. And I said, from the bottom underwater, it, if you look up a seaplane, just like the one next to us here, it's going to look like a pontoon boat. I said, Bond's underwater, he fires his spear gun into the float, and it pulls him up out of the water. He thinks he's got a boat that's going to pull him away from danger. But when he breaks the water, he's behind a seaplane that's taking off. So they love that. And they said, well, how are we going to get him onto the airplane? I said, simple. When I was in uh, high school, we used to take our girlfriends out in a seaplane and go water skiing behind it. I said, so we can do that very easily and, uh, you know, and get him on board the airplane. So they loved the idea and that's how that scene was created.
sunny or cloudy, rainy or bright, day or night. The future of flying is now clearly in sight. Garmin SBT, synthetic vision technology. You had one in, in John Travolta's face-off. We had a, a problem. They wanted me to make a 90-degree turn with a Lockheed Jetstar, which is a four-engine executive jet. And it's kind of hard to make a turn at, at 60 miles an hour in one of those airplanes. So I sat and thought about it, and I actually rigged the airplane up like a, a sidecar. I filled the right wing full of fuel, and I adjusted the strut so that the airplane was balanced. And then we actually screwed through the rim of the tire, uh, through the rim of the wheel into the tire like we used to do in my hot rod days. So we were sure that the rims would stay on and it wouldn't roll off the rims, the tires wouldn't roll off. And it worked. And that was quite a thrill going around a corner at 60 miles an hour in a Jetstar. And then we had to crash into a hangar with it. Um, so that one was pretty, pretty, pretty sophisticated. One of the problems I had was I would go out and drive at this hangar at 60 miles an hour and just to get a picture of the hangar door coming at me and I would go right next to the edge of the building and I said oh this is doable this will work and when it came the day to shoot it was a John Woo movie he was a director and we had more cameras on that scene than any other film was ever used even to date there were we had 26 cameras and because it was a one shot deal I had three cameras on the airplane so as I got the airplane rolling and got it up to speed I had to turn on the three cameras, keep the airplane in a straight line and concentrate on hitting my mark. And when I was about 200 feet out, going 60 miles an hour, and there was no turning back, I was committed, and concentrating on my spot on the hangar door, I literally thought to myself, Warnoff, what in the hell are you doing here? But it punched through rather nicely. <laughs> 